Hello, it's Alina from Exomate Mastery here. Got some weird lighting going on today, but don't worry, we're still going to keep on topic here. Today we're going to talk about Xactimate Sketch and how you can sketch elevations. And there's two different ways to do it. One of them looks like a little house, so I think that one's down here. It looks like an actual home that you could see 3D out in the field. And the other way is this weird pancake version over here. And there's a reason for doing it either way, and we will talk about the advantages to one over the other, and I'll, a couple other fun topics, how to add macros to the sketch in Sketch, which makes it easier on you. So let's go take a look. going to talk about elevations, what's the best way to sketch them, etc. So it depends on how you would like your elevations to show up in the sketch portion of your finished estimate. I can tell you right now this is not an easy concept to digest if you are a beginning Xactimate user or haven't ever seen the end of a report where the sketch is produced. Okay, so there's three different types of sketching that you'll see here. I've got my roof sketch, which is, it's a small roof just as an example. And then I've got the room underneath it. So all I did was slap a roof onto this 12 by 12 room, made it really simple and easy, threw two windows in there so you could see the difference of the two kinds of sketching. So your normal everyday sketch is to add a room, throw in some windows using the window tool, slap on a roof and then call it a day. What a lot of adjusters do, and what we've been seeing recently with some reports, and some contractors have asked me this question, is you see this here, okay? You can see an actual diagram of the front elevation. Notice here, this is just a square box, right? It has windows that we can see, but you can't tell it's a gable end from this view. You can't really see what's going on visually with that elevation. So using this type of setup here, we've actually taken a room, smashed it, and made it a diagram in the sketch window, monkeying around with all the, the properties in sketch. Okay, so this looks really cool at the end of your report, but it's very hard to do. This doesn't look so great, but it's very easy to do, okay? So there's two different schools of thought here, and I'll show you why one is better than the other depending on the application, all right? So let's get out of here and get into that sketch. So here we are. This is what the actual sketch looks like. We've got our front elevation here that you can see it looks like a gable end with the two windows, and then the normal sketch, which if I 3D it and look at all levels, you can see it looks like a normal home right? So what you can do in Sketch is add line items right here. I could do it in 3D actually. Control Shift R brings everybody back to the party. All right, so let's say I want to go ahead and paint the siding here. So let's PNT SDG. I'm going to left click once. Once I find that quick search finds the line item that I want to add. Left click once. Now it's loaded to my cursor. I can go hover over here on this 3D and place. Kabam! There we go. It's calculated 90 square feet for this area of the wall. If I want to detach that from my cursor, I just have to hit escape and that will take away the siding, paint siding line item and um, allow it to stay on the line item list but not be attached to my cursor because otherwise these little line items get kind of sticky, meaning um, I could click other places and accidentally place things. So we don't want that to happen. So escape will take that line item off of your cursor and now you can go find whatever else you need like uh, maybe PNT window opening here. So that's how that works. All right, that's how you can add quickly and easily after drawing a room and adding your roof, just drag and drop these line items onto that elevation. And that's all well and good. It's gonna calculate out pretty accurately what you are going to be needing with the line items that apply to an elevation. Now, let's take a look at our pancake house here. I can do the same thing. I can go grab PND, PNT SDG, drop that here on my uh, pancake elevation is what we'll call it. Now, once you place that line item on your elevation, you're going to need to change the calculator from W because this here, this what we're looking at is actually a floor, okay? So where it says front elevation, this pancake, 
This is actually a floor of a room that I've collapsed. Okay, so this is actually what a sketch sees as the floor. So in order to get the correct quantity, I don't want the W, which was here, because siding usually goes on a wall, right? It will have to go on the floor. Now this is where most people get lost. So let me go ahead and re-sketch this for you so you can see exactly what I did, all right? So don't let your eyes glaze over here. There's a reason for doing this and I will show you right now how it works, all right? So let me go ahead and delete this front elevation. And let's go ahead and start over with what I did. So what I did is I brought a room, just a normal room. And if you look at it in 3D, just a normal box, like its brother over here on the side. What I'm gonna do with this room is I'm gonna go ahead and go to its properties and I'm gonna turn its wall thickness to zero because we're creating a diagram of the room, a diagram of the side of the house. Okay, so you gotta, you gotta throw this, this sketch 3D stuff out the window. What we're doing is we're taking a room and we're instead drawing out a diagram of the side of the home. And the reason we're doing that is so that the adjuster can see exactly our dimensions of that side of the home. All right, so stick with me here. Trust me, it's all gonna work out. So the wall thickness needs to go to zero because if you leave it at four, you're gonna have some trouble with your uh, square footage of siding. It'll take these four inch walls and account for them. We do not want them to have any accounting for any kind of walls thickness because this is the, going to be a diagram of the elevation. Ceiling height, we want it to be zero, but right now we can't go to zero on your ceiling. The lowest we can go is four inches. That's all the program will allow. So that's fine. I just wanna turn my ceiling height down so that I can remember that this isn't a true quote unquote room. This is a diagram of the side of the home, okay? That's what we're doing here. Let's go ahead and name this front elevation before I forget, front elevation, great, there we go. And we're gonna make this um, a little bit different size here. I'm gonna make it 19 foot um, by 12. Actually, I prefer it to be a 10 foot side, be a little bit more realistic. And so this would represent a long side of a home, right? This could be uh, an elevation that has no gable end, or if you have a hip, you know, hip roof house, you're just going to have these long elevations. However, if you need to create that gable end, you can use what's called the vertex tool. And last week in the Tuesday Tech video, I covered the vertex tool. So go take a look at that. If you're confused about what the vertex tool is, you can go take a look at that video and you'll be a pro at that vertex tool. So I'm gonna set the vertex tool here dead center on that side of the elevation there. It's actually the top of the elevation if we're looking downward on it. And I'll left click, hold and drag upward and I can go to 135. I could even go to 90 if I really had a steep pitched roof, right? We could work with this here. And we're gonna just choose one of these for now. Okay, so you're gonna choose whichever fits and then we can change rafter lengths later if needed. I could pull this guy up here if you had like a salt box style house and you could work with it there. But what I usually try to do with the vertexes is set them in the middle and then monkey around with the pitch here or and then the of course which if you have the salt box salt box style you could work with that but usually set the vertex in the middle and then go from there it's a lot easier on you just a side note so now i have this beautiful looking gable end that now needs some windows so again we're treating this which is actually the quote unquote floor of the room is actually the side of the home now i know it's a brain pretzel but we're treating this floor of the room as if it's the side of the home. But what I'm gonna do is use what's called a reference area and I'm gonna drop that here for those windows. So instead of putting the window tool, I can't place a window on a floor. Excuse me here, we gotta get the three foot windows in. So I can't place a window on a floor. Xactimate won't let me do that. So I'm creating these areas using the area tool right here, reference area is what it's called. And what I'll do is go into the properties of that reference area and I'll turn it into a whole yes, okay? That way it will remove the square footage from this piece of the elevation. Now, a lot of contractors like to roll their siding over windows and they say it's included in the waste, that's fine. Then you wouldn't wanna add a window, okay? But I'm showing you your options. If you did wanna cut out the window for the elevation here, not, not a big deal, just use your reference area. And then I could just copy that guy and paste him over here so now it takes on all those properties and actually subtracts 
from the square root of footage of that elevation. Now it's looking pretty good, so I'm gonna go grab that paint line item. Do, do, do. There we are, and I'm gonna drag it over here. I'm just gonna left click once to place. You'll see that come in here. Now, it thinks it's painting the walls. So if I look at this in 3D, yes, I've got these short walls that are here that show up on the quote unquote room, but we're not using it as a room anymore. We want it to, we're using the floor as the square footage of the elevation. So I'm gonna change my calculator field. So watch that guys, if you're gonna be doing this, your calculator field should actually be an F for floor, not a W for wall. You gotta think outside the box, literally. Watch this, if I take an area and I delete it, watch my quantity, bam. There you can see in real time that it was deducting those areas for the window. So those reference areas are what you're going to do if you want to go ahead and remove those window uh, square footage. I can add those back in just by using Control Z, use my undo and those will come back in. The other fun thing that you can do with this front elevation is take an area, again, a reference area, and if I just place it here, let's say um, on the home at four foot six, we can make this a siding facade or a brick facade. That's always fun, a brick veneer. You could brick veneer this right here and add it to just that area. So this gives a little bit more play, a little bit more realistic look to what you're going to be dealing with whenever you're looking at siding, elevations, brick elevations, what have you. Now the real reason to do all this rigmarole is so that when you go to your print and when you go ahead and you pull up that sketch at the end of your report, you're going to see a totally different look on the elevation as opposed to using this as a room. So if you're a contractor that wants to show the adjuster exactly what your dimensions are, exactly what you're deducting, exactly where you're putting your brick area. In fact, I, I could go even further with that reference area and just name it brick veneer. If you're one that likes to spell out exactly what in the world you're doing with your estimate, whatever you're doing with your sketch, this is for you. This is what this style of sketching the elevation is for. If you want to just go with what the program has as defaults, then you're one of those people that should probably just sketch the room, slap the roof on top of it, and call it a day. All right, so the main difference here, guys, I want to drill this home, is the way it looks on your printed report. That's the only difference, really, if you break it down, is how it looks at the end of the day on the sketch section of the report. And actually, you could sketch each elevation this way. I could have front, right, rear, and left and you would have four different sections here. In fact, I can quickly do that for you. Let's just take this room out. Um, we could make it front, right, rear, and left just by copying and pasting. I could make this the left elevation and maybe pull it out to, you know, 25, what have you. Um, there, move my windows around if I needed to. And I could actually name this window if you wanna get that specific. You can do a lot of uh, very custom things with this. But uh, let's say we had one window there, no window there, and our brick veneer ran all the way down. Okay, so that would be my left elevation. And then I could just copy that guy and paste him over here and make him our right elevation, which would probably be true to, to real world. And then I take my front elevation, copy and paste, and make it the rear. And of course, mess with my windows and so on and so forth. I think you get the idea. Okay, so use your copy and paste to your advantage. Use the naming conventions to your advantage and um, you'll see that if you like this style, it's very easy to replicate it once you get your one elevation set up. You can copy and paste and then now your sketch page will look like this instead of just that box that we saw before. Or if you have multiple rooms, of course, you'd see the floor plan. So this is just a different way of looking at the elevations. And you'll see this on some adjuster's reports. So even if you're not going to do this on your estimates, now you know what the adjuster did and what he's trying to show you when he sketches like this. Some, some uh, carriers, small carriers, require their adjusters do this. So here, just to drill at home, this is what the 3D, the regular room looks like, or the house, if you're going to be uh, adding a room with a roof on top of it. That's what this style is. The one that I just demonstrated for you, or the style that shows you the elevations per elevation, is going to look like this in 3D. 
So hopefully that kind of drills at home what we're doing and why and what you would like to use uh, to be effective on your next report. My name is Alina Wilson with Eximate Mastery. If you like this topic, please like this video so I can create more on sketch and more on elevations. Also, please go ahead and subscribe below if you're interested in more topics. So I've got lots on my channel and every week we're uploading new content. And of course, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment below. Let me know if you like this or if you think it's garbage. I'd love to hear from you either way just to see what your thoughts are. If you'd like more information on Eximate Mastery, go to our website at www.eximatemastery.com. See you next week.